Welcome back everybody to the third of my four part series where I review food every Friday in February of 2022. Today I'm doing fake fast food burgers, comparing two of them to see which one's best. In this corner I've got Burger King with their impossible Whopper. And in this corner I've got Carl's Jr. and their Beyond Famous Star. It's Beyond versus Impossible. Carl's versus Burger King. It's a battle of the ages. Well, not really, but it should be fun. As with my other food videos, I got a guest waiting for me in the car. Let's get started and see how it goes. So today, JC is joining me for my test here. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me once again. Thank you for having me. All right, so have you ever tried either one of these Impossible or Beyond burgers? I have tried uh, certain types of these burgers before, but not at these specific locations. Okay, well, that's, yeah. the location is part of the uh, the whole idea of this. I mean, a lot of people have tried it Impossible versus Beyond, but have they really tried the Carl's Jr. versus the Burger King? I don't know about that. I don't know. It's not just the, the burger itself, it's the entire experience everything on the burger that also counts exactly yes yeah i really wanted to do this video for for a couple of reasons uh number one i've never tried either one of these before right. i've always wanted to i and i haven't yes number two is mcdonald's is actually test marketing the mcplant oh yeah. really which i believe uses beyond i i believe that's the case and i kind of want to try these two before they come out with theirs because these two have already been around for a few years right and finally i actually i have some there's some health reasons i have to reduce a little bit of my red meat in my diet so I'm going to see if these are good options yes. or not. Although I will say, I looked at the nutrition information. They're not really health food. Okay. <laughs> In fact, I've got some nutrition information right here. And check this out. Uh, first of all, I don't think the I think these share a grill with with regular meat. So it automatically vegan is off the off the table. And I also think there's mayonnaise in there. Cross contamination. There's, yeah, so mm -hmm. I think they have mayonnaise. That's also not vegan. So I noticed that the Carl's Beyond Famous Star with cheese is actually 100 calories more than the normal Famous Star. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Really? Okay. And it has more more fat in it too. So. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the, 770 for the Beyond versus 670 for the regular, which okay. I'm not sure why that is, but that's interesting. Interesting. Okay. And the Burger King Impossible Whopper is 629 calories. Okay. That's not not exactly health food. There's a ton of soda on both of these right. so i mean it really the reason you want to try these is more for having less meat, meat in your diet and yeah. not necessarily because it's much healthier right yeah. right their description just real quick uh okay. carl's says it's charbroiled 100 percent plant-based beyond burger patty on our iconic famous star featuring melted american cheese lettuce tomato sliced onions which i left off oh <laughs> yes dill pickles special sauce mayonnaise on a seeded bun burger king says quarter pound patty tomatoes lettuce mayonnaise ketchup pickles white onions, which I also left off, and a sesame seed bun. So very similar. Let's see how they compare. Let's open up the first one. Let's, I guess Burger King's first in the alphabetical order. So let's try the Burger King and see how it goes. Yes. <laughs> All right, so here it is. Let's see what we got. It looks real. Does it look real to you? Let me, uh, let me cut this bad boy in half and see what we got. Yes. <laughs> let us fly around everything. Yes. All right, let's take a closer look at that. That looks like a regular hamburger to me. Yes, I would agree. Maybe a little thinner, but otherwise... Maybe a little bit, yeah. One thing that stands out to me is the the meat is a little bit thinner than regular meat would be, um, but the condiments remain the same, I believe. So I'm very curious to try this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, a lot of people have tried, like, these... I, I saw on YouTube, there's been a lot of Impossible versus Beyond, but they're just trying the patties and the meat. you got to try yes. it in, in its context. It's possible that one of these is, is better by itself, but when you add all the stuff around it, it might pair well with the ingredients. Exactly. All right, okay. so I'm ready to take a bite. Okay, cheers. All right, cheers. cheers. Bing. Bing. There we go. Yes. All right, so we've, I've taken several bites of mine. What did you think of yours? Likewise, as I have too, it is really good. I wonder if the ingredients on this specific burger kind of mask the flavor of the fake um, plant-based burger. I think that's kind of the idea, you know, like that the, when you put it around all those ingredients, you're not going to really be able to discern the plant-based flavor versus a real meat. Right. So. I am kind of curious if we were to separate this burger from the bread and the condiments, what the meat actually tastes like. Let's take a bite of just the burger with no nothing else. Okay. Try it by itself. Yeah. Ready? Yes. Did that bite out of context help your opinion at all? Yes, I would say it did. They actually did a pretty good job, I find, in making it taste like meat. All right, so my opinion, <laughs> I can kind of tell that it's like a veggie burger. I mean, I've, I used to 
eat a lot of veggie burgers back in the day. And even though I'm not really fooled that it's real meat, I think that it worked quite well. That charbroiled flavor really was kind of the most prominent flavor, which is, is a good thing. Yes. So I, I thought it was, I'll, I'm going to eat the rest of it when the camera's off. It's pretty close. I mean, they're, they're getting closer these days. And the old school veggie burgers were not good back in the day. You felt like you were just eating a bunch of smashed up vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let me um, get situated with the next one and see how that goes. Yes. Next up is the Carl's Jr. Beyond Meat. I'm excited about yes. that one. Now, before I get to that one, would you buy the Burger King uh, Impossible Whopper again? I would most definitely buy that Burger King Impossible Whopper again. I was pleasantly surprised by it as a whole overall, for, for sure, definitely. I really like it. I, I, the only problem is that, you know, the calorie, you're not going to gain anything as far as calories goes. I do have some dietary reasons that I would want to avoid meat for a little while. Um, but otherwise, I don't see... It's pretty good though. I mean, like, I, I don't think that I, it was much of a step down, so I would definitely buy it again. I yes. Mean, yeah. But before we get too far, let's see how it compares to what Carl's. Carl's might be blown out of the water. We'll yes. see. Yes. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, it's very, oh, it looks sloppy early. It looks very sloppy. That's the slop fest. A little bit. It's, it's very dense. I feel I could lift weights with this thing here. Is it heavier than it a regular heavy, burger? It feels heavier. Maybe I'm just, I don't know. It just feels very dense. The, they stack things in a different order than Burger King does. That's kind of interesting. That is interesting. What do you guys think? Pretty good? All right. It doesn't look the same as the Burger King one. So even though they're both plant-based burgers, they look very different. I guess they're going to taste very different too. We'll see. Yes. I want to point out something. Something I observed, the meat in air quotations seems a bit thicker than the previous plant-based burger we just had. And also it kind of has the remnants of um, some blood, you know, like regular meat would have, which is interesting. I think that they did that on purpose. Did they? I, th I think. Beyond Meat launched in 2009 okay. and Impossible in 2011. Okay. Do you say 2009 or 2009? I've always said 2009. Uh, what about you? Uh, I, I've recently transitioned to 2009, but okay. I'm getting way off, <laughs> off topic here. And so anyway, and, and in both these places, Carl's and Burger King both introduced their uh, plant-based burgers in 2019. So they're both about, about three years they've been around. Really? Yeah. Okay. And McDonald's is about to jump in. It's They're gonna they're throwing their hat Let's in the arena. Let's see, Mickey D's. Let's see. The McPlant is coming yeah. soon. So this is like a precursor to that. Yes. All right. So you ready to eat this one? I'm very excited. All right. All right here we go. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. All right, we're going to do what we did last time and just each take a little piece of the burger by itself and try yes. that as well. Yes. Ready? Yes. What are your immediate thoughts? My immediate thoughts, I need another bite. Yes. <laughs> I'll be honest, that was actually kind of different than I expected. What do you think about it? I agree. I, it was different than I expected. Very interesting. I would say when we took a little piece of that plant-based burger out of the condiments and separated it from the bread and everything, the charbroiled, I think it's definitely charbroiled, that really helps out in the flavor of making it seem like it's meat. It's definitely thicker than the previous mm -hmm. plant-based burger, which is interesting. The condiments are great. Um, they really add to the flavor flavor of kind of like masking out any potential issues with like meat. I think that this one to me tastes more meat-like than yes. the previous one. The previous one to me tasted like a veggie burger. This one I'm stretching to taste it as being a veggie burger. Although it's not quite meat. It's kind of in between a veggie burger and meat to me. Right. I actually might be fooled that this is a real burger mm -hmm. if someone hadn't told me. I might be. Yes. I, the first one I wouldn't be. This one I might be. Really? Yeah, I might. I, I, would, I almost wish I hadn't yeah. known what it was because it's it's that close to me. Mm -hmm. I think if you were to put both of these burgers in front of me, I would be kind of easily fooled and think that they were both actual meat burgers, but they're not. So let's talk about our favorites of these two, which I know that we both like both of these, but which one would you think is your favorite of these two? In terms of favorite, I would say my favorite is the Burger King option. I really like the Carl's Jr. option, but something about the Burger King option was very, very, uh, I was easily fooled by it in terms of believing that it could be related to meat. What about you? I'm a little split on this one. I kind of preferred some of the, the flavor of the Burger King. Like I feel like the Carl's Jr. was more meat-like, but yeah. flavor-wise, man, it's close. I think it I have to, I might have to go with the Burger King on this one. You think so? It's really close though. I mean, like, I think that even though the Carl's Jr. tastes more like meat, I think the Burger King, just as an overall sandwich mm -hmm. with everything on it, is better. Uh, right. As far, if I did them individually, just the individual bites, 
I'd probably give the edge to Carl Jr. as being more meat-like. Okay, I respect that. Yeah, yeah definitely. I Th would. That say was like the most non-answer ever. What? <laughs> what? I, I basically but said I like both of them. Oh yes, yes. I will say too. And in terms of appearance for the Carl's Jr. option, the bloody look, the somewhat bloody look, it was definitely kind of easily fooled me. I think that if I had taken the patties out separately and eaten them, I would have preferred the Carl's Jr. I just think that the Whopper with everything on it and the way it's presented is better. So I mean, right. it's kind of like it's not it's not a it's not a landslide. I mean, yeah. there's they both have a lot to offer. I think they're both pretty good. If you're looking for health food, you might want to keep looking because it's yeah. not really that healthy. <laughs> yes, it tastes good though. It it's tastes good, good. It's good stuff though. Yeah. But if you've tried these, tell us what you think in the comments below. Yes. Thank you, JC, for Thank joining you, me everybody. once again for my food videos this month. <laughs> yes, it's an absolute pleasure. Stick around for a quick Q&A at the end and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. <laughs> If you're still here, thank you very much for sticking around for the bonus section. I've got a little bit of a Q&A here. A couple weeks ago, I actually asked for questions for Q&A. I did, and I already posted that. But there was a lot of questions, and I wanted to get to a few more, so I figured I'd stick it at the end of this video and answer a few more. So here we go. Ugly Barnacle 669 asks, can you do Shark Tank Saturdays or something to that extent? I'd like to see Shark Tank products reviewed, not just the food. I think it would be very interesting to watch. Now, I've done some Shark Tank products already. I did the draft top, the broom, the fur zapper, the salad sling, in addition to the food ones. And I do plan on doing more Shark Tank videos in the future. In fact, Shark Tank is kind of slowly becoming the new as seen on TV. So I definitely plan on doing more of them in the future. I'm not sure if there's enough of them to do every week. Uh, but maybe what I'll do is, I'm right, right now in February, I'm doing some food videos every Friday. Maybe I'll do a month of Shark Tank videos every Saturday. So give me some time and I'll try to work on that for you and see what I can do. Scott Button writes, I would love to know where your personal passion and dedication to gadgets comes from. You're always determined to provide the best possible user reviews for your followers. Thank you very much for that statement, by the way. You know, I just, I have a real problem wasting money on items. I, I really don't like when I buy something and I feel like I got ripped off. Having this YouTube channel kind of provides me the opportunity to help other people from feeling like they get ripped off by giving me these items a test. On the other hand, there's an inventor behind every product that deserves a fair shake as well. So I, I try to be as fair as I can. I mean, everybody has biases, but I really try to be fair. Ace wants to know, what do you dislike the most about the process of making, filming, editing your videos? You know, what, what I really don't like is when I start a video and it becomes a way bigger project than I anticipated. It's one thing when you go into it knowing it's going to be a big project. It's another thing when you think this is going to be kind of a nice one. I can throw it, I can slip in there in between videos and it becomes a massive project. That can throw me way behind. I mean, it, I really sometimes scramble when these videos take much longer than I anticipate. I usually give myself about three days of filming for each video. If it takes much more than that, it can throw me way off. This person asked, I've always wondered about your background before you started YouTube. What did you study and what was your profession? I studied music. I've got two degrees in music theory and composition. As far as career goes, it's kind of always been changing. I started off as a substitute teacher. I taught some music courses at the end of grad school. I was a graphic artist. I was a sports handicapper. I was an advertising director. I was a full-time blogger. Now I'm a full-time YouTuber, so it's kind of a weird resume. Robin asks, what do you do with the leftover stuff you have after review, like the toast from the toaster review? In regards to food, I really try to eat all of it or, or save it or freeze it. As far as the toast goes, I make croutons out of it. Library Law Clerk asks, has a company ever tried to bribe you to give you their products for a positive review? I get that on a daily basis from Amazon vendors who email me trying to tantalize me with their $20 product for free. I get out of here. If I want to review your product, I'll buy it and review it myself. I don't need a $20 product in exchange for a good review. I won't do that. I also don't take sponsored posts. It's on my About tab on my YouTube channel, but I still get 20 offers a day for sponsored posts. I don't want to do them. I won't do them. This person asked, from one baldy to another, what do you use to keep yourself nice and clean shaven? My razor of choice is the Gillette Fusion 5 series. I'm still using the same handle I had four years ago. Those blades last me about a month each. They're really good blades. I have not found a blade that I like better than those. For my final question, I've got Mutt the Noob says, long time watcher. Thank you for that, by the way. Have you ever not liked a product and tried it again before going to the boneyard and realized it's not as bad as you originally thought? The first one that comes to mind to me would probably be the Furwell Broom. I really wasn't that impressed by it, but once I started turning it over and using the squeegee side to pick up dog hair, I was really kind of impressed by it. I, I really like it for that, and I've left it out ever since then. I wasn't real impressed by the broom itself, but for that feature, I actually like it quite a bit. I guess a related answer to that would be the Cool Turtle. It's not something that I ever liked. I actually really didn't like it at all. I put it as my one of my worst of the year last year, but a lot of people have actually written and say they disagree with my assessment of that so I mean I have to take that in consideration a lot of people think I was I was mistaken about the cool turtle I personally didn't like it but I understand a lot more people liked it than I expected all right well thank you for sticking around for this bonus question and answer I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time